Love and peace to you. Good evening and welcome to Redeeming Love Christian Church. I pray that you are experiencing the redeeming love of God that redeems, unveils, and empowers. I'm so very thankful to have you here with us. Thankful to the Lord that he has purposed you to be here. You're not here by happenstance, but you are here by divine appointment. However, I have another assignment on this evening, and therefore I won't be present with you live. There is no distance in the spirit, and so though I won't be here with you live, I'm certainly here with you in spirit. I want to encourage you along this wise. We'll be playing this past Sunday's service. Uh, we'll be replaying that for your uh, hearing. The word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for you to rehearse the word of the Lord in your hearing to you, for you to get it down in your spirit, for you to get it down and allow the Lord to write upon the tablets of your heart that you might not sin against him. It's imperative that we become hearers and doers of the word, not just hearers only. And so as we hear the word over and over again, faith comes by hearing and we apply it to our lives and we become doers of the word, thereby satisfying God's purpose and intent in our in increasing our faith. And so again, welcome to the service tonight. The Lord is going to bless you mightily as you open up wide your ears to hear, allow the Lord to write upon your heart and prepare and plan to do that which you have heard. The Lord bless you. Thank you so very much for tuning in with us today. Uh, I am very grateful. I hope that you are too uh, for Dr. King and what he has done for our nation and for our country. He is, uh, I know I am his fellow Morehouse alum. Uh, so, and, and had the opportunity to work and be an intern or a student assistant at the King Memorial Chapel under uh, Dr. Uh, Lawrence Carter. So I know all too well the impact that he has had, not just on the city, but the entire nation. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's get into the word of God. Let's prepare ourselves for thus saith the Lord. Amen. 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 So uh, we know that at the very beginning, the Lord has been um, has been very grateful to gracious to give our bishop elect the uh, divine principles going into this year. And we have eight of those points and we've been dealing with divine resources. I want to continue to deal with that on today. But uh, understanding that I'm dealing with divine resources and I'm going to put a semicolon. I'm preaching to the semicolon. And what that means is that I'm going to do a complete statement. And then when Bishop comes back, he'll be able to put another complete statement at the end of it as we continue to go forward. Amen. Amen. So I want to give you our scriptures for today so that you can write those down. I know that we have some notorious and uh, vigilant note takers here at Redeeming Love. Uh, Luke chapter 7. Verses two through five and Nehemiah chapter two, verses one through 10. Again, that is Luke chapter seven, two through five and Nehemiah chapter two, verses one through 10. Divine resources, divine resources. All right. So the first thing that I want to bring up for your consideration is the word resources. Now, if we would be honest, when we heard Bishop say, uh, and I would venture to say any minister, when they say resources, the first thought that comes to our mind is money. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we think about is money. But can I venture to uh, encourage you to understand that uh, Collins and Oxford dictionaries respectfully define resources as one, a stockpile or supply of money, materials, staff, and other assets that can be drawn on by a person or organization in order to function effectively. Let me read that again. A stock or supply of money, materials, staff, and other assets that can be drawn on by a person or organization in order to function effectively. Another definition, something that lies in ready for use or can be drawn upon for aid or to take care of a need resources. Amen. So I would like to talk, let's take a look at Luke chapter seven. Let's look at that first. When uh, Bishop read that on last week, there was something that leaped in me. Uh, 
have read the passage many times, have preached it, and, you know, we've done all those things. But there was something that was interesting uh, as he was reading it that jumped out to me. So let's read it again. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. A certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. I'm reading from the King James Version. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him, speaking of Jesus. In fact, let me, let me take, there are a lot of uh, pronouns in here. Let's, let's put this in the first person. And when he had heard, when the centurion had heard of Jesus, the centurion sent unto Jesus the elders of the Jews, beseeching Jesus that he would come and heal the centurion servant. And when they came to Jesus, that being the elders, they besought Jesus instantly saying, the centurion is worthy for whom Jesus should do this. For the centurion loveth our nation and has built us a synagogue. So I want to, I want to give you a point of emphasis. Verse three. And when Jesus had, and when the centurion had heard of Jesus, the centurion sent unto Jesus, the elders of the Jews. Let me tell you why that leaped out to me. Because the first thing that this centurion, this person of structure, this person of authority realized was there's protocol. The first thing he did was he called on human resources. He called the elders. So I'm, I'm challenging all the leaders of ministries. I'm challenging all the leaders of, of, of churches and, and those who are in the eldership position. I, I'm blessed to be or licensed and ordained as a minister and an elder. I've been consecrated as a pastor. I, I, I've been installed. All those things are wonderful. But here's the thing. When it is time to get ready. It ain't time. It's, when it's time to be ready, it's not time to get ready. Excuse me. You know, for those of us here at Redeeming Love, we know that Bishop loves to ex, uh, give us that statement. So when we're looking at this text, the first thing I want to give you is our first point, human resources. We all have an assignment. Everybody has a responsibility. Everybody has an assignment and everybody must work together that we might execute what is the game plan. Does that make sense? So on last week, when the Steelers did not execute the game plan, uh -huh. it's because somebody was not in their position. Absolutely. When we, whenever we find a situation where there's a failure to execute the plan, you usually can find it where somebody is not in position. Uh -huh. In fact, on the Sunday school call, they were talking about this morning. Uh, the example that Elder Maria gave was whenever one leg is not willing to do its part, the other leg has to compensate. And then now, instead of us standing tall and running and jumping or doing what we need to, we seem to have a limp. We seem to have a lean. We seem to have a, 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 a lack in one area. Mm -hmm. That's because somebody is not on their divine assignment. Right. Let me ask you now, as you're in the church, as you're in the place of worship, are you in your divine assignment? Are we in our place where we need to be? Are we in our place where we need to execute resources, divine resources, includes you. It includes me. We are a part of God's divine resource. That means we just, we just don't come to the house of God or we don't tune into uh, our stream and we just sit there and listen and take it in. We, we exchange, we interact, we put comments, we post, we sit and we pray for our pastors. We pray for those who are, and we provide our financial resources. But when it's time to execute, we know that our, our pastors and leaders are are the ones who have a heart to give at Thanksgiving. We give out meals and uh, uh, full packages at Christmas. We give out uh, meals and full bundles of gifts. The, the part of that, because that is the heart of who they are. The question becomes when they put out the clarion call for volunteers to help out with those meals, handing them out to people in their cars. Are you an available, readily available resource for the organization to pull upon, to call upon, to execute what it is, thus saith the Lord? We are a part of that divine resource. So now when we're as we're looking at human resources again in Luke, part of the context is that you have to be content with your position. Now, there are all too many times and there's too many. I've been churching all my life. And there's too many times that we can see where somebody thinks, well, I can do it better. 
The, the, one of the junior ushers thinks he can do it better than the senior usher. Right. One deacon thinks he can deek better than the other deacon. <laughs> we got somebody who thinks, oh, she thinks she can sing. Why is she the worship leader? Yeah. So you'll, you'll have a challenge where people will begin to become jealous or envious of somebody else's position. Sure. Why can't we be content with the position that we're in right now? Why can't we be content with the execute and uh, or content with the responsibilities that we have right now? Can I can I offer something to you? The scripture tells us if you're faithful over a few things, maybe just maybe the reason you're still on a junior usher is because you didn't usher very well. Maybe the reason you're not deacon as well as somebody else is because when it's time to call on that member or to check in on that person, you don't take the time to do it. Maybe, just maybe, when it's time for the elders to oversee and to look into and check on and support the head as well as reach down into the ministry, that maybe we're not executing and we're causing the body to have a limp. So as it came to the elders of the Jews, the centurion called upon the elders to reach out to the, the Savior for the healing that his, his servant needed. Be content with your position as it relates to the body. Be ready to support the body. Every, there ain't but one microphone. Two when Bishop says for co-pastor to come up, be with him. Everybody can't have a microphone. But we all have a role. We all have responsibility to do in the body of Christ. We have a responsibility. Listen, God gives you a microphone sometimes. Amen. Sometimes God gives you a microphone where you're at work and somebody, a co-worker is crying, is have a heavy heart. That is your microphone, your microphone to say, are you all right? Can I pray with you? There is your microphone. Maybe just maybe you have an opportunity to be a blessing to someone who's at the grocery store who doesn't have enough money to get all the groceries that they need. There's your microphone, your microphone to be able to be content with what your position is in the body. Amen. Now, let's also be content with our position as it pertains to the person to be impacted. See, everybody doesn't have the, the wherewithal to walk up to a stranger and, and say, may I introduce Jesus to you? Right. But every one of us who calls ourselves to be a part of the kingdom of heaven has the wherewithal to live a life that impacts the greater person. That you're on your job and when everything is going crazy, you're still holding your peace. You're still maintaining your composure. And somebody says, how is it? That you're able to stay cool when this is going on and that is going on or this is happening and that is happening. That man or that woman was cursing right in your face and you didn't do anything. In fact, I saw you mumbling. What were you mumbling under your breath? I was praying. Yeah. Father, forgive them for they don't know what I'm about to do. No, I'm just kidding. But they know that we know how to pray. We know how to intercede. This is what our responsibility is. How are we content with our position? Therefore, the king said to me, why is your face sad? Since you are not sick, there is nothing but sorrow in your heart. So I became dreadfully afraid. And the king said to me, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs lies in waste and its gates are burned to fire? Then the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to God of heaven. Somebody Somebody, you need, to, you need to highlight this scripture. You need, to, you need to circle it, underline it. Then the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. Now let's continue. And I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the place of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, with the queen sitting right beside him, how long will your journey be and when will you return? So it pleased the king to, see, to send me and I set a time. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I said to the king, if it please the king, let the letters be given for me of the governors of the region beyond the river that they must pre permit me to pass through till I come to Judah and a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest that he must give me the timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel, which pertains to the temple for the city wall and for the house that I will occupy. And the king granted them to him. The, he gave him the letters that he would be in good hands and God uh, to the good hand of my God upon thee. 
Then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the armies and of the horsemen with me. We'll stop right there. So now point number two, resource access. Resource access. This is your divine position. Nehemiah was King Artaxerxes' cupbearer. Right. Now, for those of you who don't know what a cupbearer is, a cupbearer has the distinct privilege of being the taster for the king. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's new wine, whenever something's brought to the king, he, he, he consumes it first to see if there's any poison, and then he gives it to the king. He has an, a close proximity to the king in the most uh, important time in his consumption of food. Now, if you've ever been out with somebody, that's when you're most relaxed. That's when, that's when you're feeling your best. In fact, uh, uh, Lady Tony and I, before the fast uh, began, had the opportunity to experience a wonderful restaurant in Atlanta. And it was a wonderful date night because you just sat down. We relaxed. We chit-chatted. We talked. Everything was fine. We, she wouldn't let me put, play footsie under the table, but it was a good time. Here we have uh, Nehemiah, who is in close proximity. Now, for those of you who are uh, 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 study, studying the word of God, I want you to go back and I want you to read Nehemiah chapter one, because Nehemiah chapter one gives you a, a frame set for what the text is. Nehemiah chapter one talks about when a, a, a family member came to the citadel, to the capital of Ad where Artaxerxes kingdom was, to the Assyrian capital, to the Persian capital. He came in and Nehemiah asked him, how be the city? How is our family doing? He said, ain't good, bro. Right. They done burned down, the, they, they burned down the gates. They burned down the wall. They left the temple alone uh, for the most part, but it's rough out there. Uh -huh. And then immediately, I want you to look at the text because it tells you when that family member came. Mm -hmm. And then it was four months. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Four months. Some of us have been complaining about fasting for just these last uh, seven or eight days. Four months, Nehemiah fasted and prayed. Four months, he fasted and prayed to seek God because he trusted that God was going to give him insight and answers to how to deal with the circumstance. So that whole first chapter is a prayer and an outline of Nehemiah pursuing after God. What did he do? He confessed the sins of the people. We were wrong, God. This is why we are, we are cast out. This is why we are in the situation that we're in. And because of that, we went and we asked for your forgiveness. Because of God's hand, the divine placement, the divine position that he has been given, his divine assignment, Nehemiah, is to be able to be in the presence of the decision maker. You have to understand, the king had already given a decree that no one is to rebuild the walls of Judah. He had already been manipulated by, by uh, Samballot and by uh, those who are with him, the uh, Philistines and the, uh, uh, I think it's the, Amorites, they had already said that they're trying to fortify their walls to go against you. And the king had already decreed the walls are not to be rebuilt. And now here we have Nehemiah who has to stand before the king and ask, reverse your decision and pay for it. Now you got to understand something. You might ask for the time off, but they may not pay for it. You may ask for the new, a, a new vehicle, but who say they're going to pay for it? Right. He had the audacity to be able to go to the king who had already decreed, no one shall build the wall. But you got to look for that little, there's a little subtext on the end of that statement. I want you to find it. That's your homework for this week. Look at Nehemiah chapter one and see what the king said at the end of his statement. We said, no one shall rebuild the walls. And then he put a little statement at the end. Now, what he did was he had favor. You know, we've also, we've heard people say favor ain't fair. Favor will put you in the, in the company of great people. Our bishop and our co-pastor, they have been given great favor over their lives. Doors open to them. They've been in places where they, they take the place of the low, they take the seat of the low place. And somebody, a bishop will call, what are you doing down there? Get up here, come sit with us. 
They will have favor. Bishop has had favor throughout his career. Doors open to him. Doors uh, that people would say, how did he get in here? Positions in corporate America that God has opened to him because he has the favor of God on his life. And that's why you have to understand something. When, when, you're, when you're covering, when your divine covering has favor on their lives in this capacity, you can ask God, let that anointing flow from his head down to his beard, onto his skirts and onto me. Open doors that no man can shut. Nehemiah was standing in the presence of the king and because of uh, this favor, he was able to have access to the resources that he needed. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's that's like if we decided we were going to build a church. This is a, 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 a far throw in the example, but we decided we're going to build us a new building. And we walked down to Home Depot and said, the Lord said. Clear all building supply, and give it to us. Now, sir, you can have this, but you're going to have to pay for it. Sure. This is what Nehemiah, Nehemiah was basically saying. I need all the resources, resources I need to rebuild the walls. Even though you said don't, I need all the resources that I need and I need you to pay for it. And look at the favor of God. Why? Because all the years that he had been serving as the cupbearer to the king, he had never looked dis disheveled. He had never looked saddened. He had never looked sick. What did the king say? What's wrong with you? I know you're not sick because if you were sick, you wouldn't be holding my cup. So what, what, what's got your countenance down? What's got you looking pitiful? Any of the parents out there, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know how the children do when that new toy comes on the commercial and they decide they go come and look as pitiful as they can. I'm, I'm grateful to God that uh, I don't have to deal with toys, but now, now my, my children's toys are far more expensive. They, they, they don't want toys. They want stuff to light up and slide and... When the screen crack, it costs um, a car payment. You know, this is this is this is the situation we have now. But they know how to work you. Elder Martin know what I'm talking about. They 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 know how to look at you. And all of a sudden, now all all week long, we said, "What's up? What's up?" But when they see what they want, Daddy, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's going on here? Are hey, you trying to set me up? Nothing. You're just the most awesome dad. No, my wallet is already trying to hide. But they know. What it is they need to say to the father. Somebody will catch that in a minute. To get what we need, we need to know what to say to the father. What do you say to the father? I'm glad you asked. You say what he said. You pray the word of God. You pray his word back to him. Moses was the best example of that. When God said, I'm going to kill all of them. I'm sick of them. They are, they are, they are a thorn. I'm, I'm done. Moses said. Your word was that these are your people. You have to be able to know and study the word of God so that you can pray the word of God. Amen. Yes. Now, do you have a job that influences the decision maker? Some of you sit in, in places that you have access to people. Mm -hmm. You are a person of administration or you're a person of influence in your school. Mm -hmm. You are a person of influence in your job. Such that when your department head is saying, you know, we really would like to volunteer and do something to reach out to the community. Anybody have any ideas? Sure. Well, there's actually this thing that we do uh -huh. at my church. Yeah. Are you in a position to influence decision makers? Now, here's another thing. Have you carried yourself in a way that would invoke confidence regarding you? That's what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah had been a, a faithful servant. He had been a consistent servant. He had been consistent in such a way that he had, he had instilled confidence, uh -huh. confidence from the king, such that when the king saw something is off because of who you are and how consistent you have been, I'm willing to hear what your request is. Yeah. Now, after that, pray for wisdom. Nehemiah, as I told you before, he had prayed for four months before he even made his request known unto the king. He prayed the word of God and he declared the wisdom that God gave him. You have to understand. Remember what we said in that verse. I believe it was verse five. Verse four. And the king said to me, what do you request? May, may I put it in King James or, or just Pastor James? What's, what's, up, what's wrong with you? What you want? What you need? Because what, what I want you to do is I don't need you to fix your face. What you need? Come on, come 
And immediately he prayed. Now, Father, you've opened the door. Give me the right thing to say because you've been, we've been talking for the last four months. Some of us, we just start talking. When it's your end of the year performance review, some of us just had them a few, few weeks ago. And, and your, your manager, your team leader, your whomever says, hey, uh, let's do your performance review. And at the end of it, they say, Are there, is there anything you'd like to share with me? Yeah, I'd like to talk to you about who, how you, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't use no wisdom. You have to use wisdom. Amen. So now, are you in a position? Are you have done it now? Declare the wisdom that God has given you, because if you've taken the time to study the word, you've taken the time to fast, you've taken the time to pray. You need to also speak the speak the wisdom, because listen, listen to what he came up with. What you want? He said, oh, king, live thou forever. First thing you need to understand is you need to let him know I respect you. I respect who you are and I respect the authority that you have. And because of this authority that you have, I need this much money. I need these many letters and I need to get the wood and I need to get the, I need everything I need to go against what you've already declared. I know you've already said no before, but I'm looking for a God given yes now. I know that you've stated and you've declared that you don't want to do it because you think it, it'll make you look bad. But I need you to have some confidence in me. Yeah. I need to restore the walls of my home where my fathers are because he's hundreds of miles away from home. Mm -hmm. He's hundreds of miles away from Judah. And he said, all we're trying to do is keep the temple safe. Mm -hmm. So we have to have that confidence. Now, once he said, I need letters, I need timber. And I need to be able to get on my way. Here's the other thing that I like about the text. The king said to him, how long are you going to be? Anybody ever had that, that's, that assignment when your, your manager asked, all right, I need this, 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 and this, and this, and three of those, and six of these. How long is it going to take you? Because I'm not just giving you just going to do. I need to know when you're going to be back. The expectations have been set. The threshold has been set. And so what he's expecting from you is, when are you going to be back? Because I, while I'm going to let you do this, you still have a job with me. There's still service I need you to do with me. There's still something I need you to do with me. And in doing so, he said, and I set a time. Can I translate that to 2021? He executed the plan. He killed the spirit of procrastination. How far would all of us be? If we kill the spirit of procrastination. Ah, oh, just, just five more minutes. No, get up. You know, I, I've written out these vision boards and it's magnificent. And I put it up. Then what? Execute. What's the next step? What are you going to do? It says that he took the letters and he started on his journey. Are you with me? Yeah. So our first, our first was human resources with an assignment. Mm -hmm. Our second point. Resource access, your position, the favor of God. Our third point, activate your resources. God has given you the resources. Now it's time to activate the resources. Can I break it down a little bit more? Now, I, I, I'm not going to be foolish enough. I pastor for 10 years. It takes money to run ministry. So we do need. We do need people to give. We do need to people to understand that as God is blessing you, we're looking for you to be a blessing to the work that we're doing here in the kingdom. Simple as that. Now, if you don't believe that the work of the kingdom is being done where you are. But now that Nehemiah has the letters for the resources, he executes. He got the letters he asked for and he started on his journey. The first thing that he did, he said, I know I need a letter to be able to cross the river because the rivers are the, the, that barrier that's protecting this kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you got some fierce warriors who are ready to kill anybody that look like they're out of place. Right. So I need a letter to say, hey, let him go. <laughs> and the king's seal is on it and he's making his way. And as he's on his way, he's going to encounter centurions. He's going to en en encounter uh, 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 different armies and, and, and different barricades and he must maintain and hold on to the seal of God. You and I will encounter those people who are going to come against us. They're going to come and they're going to be opposition to us. Sweet as you may be, you will be on your job and somebody going to come against you. They're not going to like you just because they don't like you. Why? Because the devil in them. 
And you've got to have the letter of God that says, I'm a child of the king. And you've got to hold on to your letters that know that. Listen, it doesn't matter if the devil sends uh, fire by day, fire by arrow or come against you against it. No weapon that is formed against us will prosper. You've got to know your letters. And then he got on. He said, now we need to get the timber. Now, here's the thing. As he's executing for passage and for resources, the king said, that ain't going to be enough. Let me send some army with you. Just so people know, I really meant what I said. Because the letters are one thing. But when the captain's host is also giving you a ride, you say, all right, there he is. Let me give you, give you an example. Using our modern day, uh, when, whenever our president of this country comes into any community, there is a complete shift of protection, levels of security, and otherwise. You can't fly in similar airspace. You'll be up in the air just enjoying yourself, coming back from your little vacation, and you're trying to come into Hartsfield Airport. Oh, here comes the president. Well, we're going to have to circle the airport a few times. Right. Wait a minute, I'm ready to go home. But the king has sent word, y'all need to make way because my emissary, my, who I've sent is coming to you. Are you with me? Yeah. You've got backup. To activate your resources, you've got backup. To activate the favor that God has given you, you've got backup. Sometimes you need to understand what that means. The king extended unprecedented authority to a relatively unknown, unexpected, unassuming cupbearer. Yes, please know and understand. The cupbearer is in close proximity to the king. But the cupbearer is also very expendable. Your job is to taste poison first. It's not like you're my favoriteest person in the world. I appreciate what it is that you do, but there's four, there are four or five more up behind you in case something was in the cup. So somebody said, yes, this is, a cup, this is the king's cup bear. You're dressed in, in, in the right finery and all that, but who, you know, who are you? But now he has all this backup. If he called you to it, he's with you in it. That's what we have to understand and, and hear and understand. Just because you think you're not called to the pulpit, you're not called to the pastor. You need a calling when we get back to worship. And I am so looking forward to coming back for collective corporate worship. There's something about us being in the presence of God together. Do you know, I, I remember as a child being an usher. I had my white gloves with my, my arm behind my back. You had to learn the movements. But every now and again, you'll get somebody to come to church that ain't got no coof. And you have to have a calling on your life to be a door bearer. You have to have a calling on your life to keep the gates of the door. You have to have a calling on your life to intercede and to pray for people when they come and they call our 800 number. You have to have a calling and a preparation for what you need to do. That's what you need to understand. God will not just call you to it. He'll be with you in it. In case there was any question of his authenticity, he gave him power to back him up. In case anybody thought that there was some 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 foolishness going on with the letters and maybe he uh, he uh, forged those. He sent back up. God gave us back up. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I would not leave you comfortless, but I will give you the Holy Spirit. It's described as dunamis, the power of God. Yeah. The power of God is with us every single day. The power of God is with us to walk out and to execute what it is. Thus saith the Lord. I know that it can be challenging sometimes. You, you know why I believe most of our challenges come in our lives to execute and to fulfill the word of God and to walk an upright and righteous life because we don't call on the power that is in us. We try to do it within the strength of ourselves. Listen, if you can't walk past cake without trying to get you a, a quick little slice, I'm just get a little half slice. I'm going to get the regular slice. I'm going to get it just a little taste. If you get to a point where you can't get, you can't walk past that, what makes you think the very thing that the devil put in front of you, you're going to have the strength to walk past it? Come on. We have to be able to say, in the name of Jesus, help me in my area. Fill in what your area is. 
Your area may be TikTok. Your area may be Instagram. Your, mar- your area may be bow leg and, and light eyes. Your, 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 your area could be money. Your area could be being out all night. Your area could be whatever it is. But if you call yourself, if you have believed that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that he is uh, crucified for our sins, if you've confessed and believed, then you have the Holy Spirit to be able to speak and say, help me get through this one. I don't have it within me. I don't have the strength within me. If I had the strength, he wouldn't have needed to send the Holy Ghost. But that's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. He will disquiet your enemies. That's our last point. In verse number 10. In verse number 10, it talks about Samballot. Samballot, who was the one, the Hittite. He was the, uh, the, uh, the Pharisee. He was, excuse me, not Pharisee. He was the, uh, He was the enemy of Israel that said they're trying to rebuild the walls and trying to overtake you. They're trying to break free. Here they come. They they thought they had won. And when they found out Nehemiah was on his way and not just on his way, but he had the king's army. He had the resources and he had the timber and he had the he had everything that he needed to be able to rebuild the walls. And they couldn't stop him. They became uneasy. Nehemiah has not raised his hand. Nehemiah has not declared anything. Nehemiah has not said nanny nanny boo boo. Nehemiah just is coming to execute what it is God gave him to do. God will disquiet your enemies. God will handle your enemies. You just need to be able to stand on the confidence that God is with me. The king has told me what I need to do. My God king has told me where I should be. And my God king has provided the resources for the vision that he's given me. And because he's done that, I don't have to worry about my enemies. He'll handle my enemies. He will disquiet my enemies. He will make them uncomfortable. They're going to continue to come after you. They're going to continue to come at you. But God will handle them if you focus on your divine resource. You are the divine resource. You are you are yourself a resource for the kingdom of God. And if you are in your position, he will also give you the favor that you need so that you can execute your divine assignment. I need you to understand that there there is a continuity to what our bishop has been trying to let us understand. It's, 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 It's not simply about your money. It's about you in the body of Christ. It's about you in the kingdom assignment that we have been given. It's about how we carry ourselves. Listen, we say that we are called to demonstrate God's love. You can't demonstrate God's love cutting people off in the line. You cannot demonstrate God's love uh, uh, going off on Walmart because it was $1.97 instead of $1.79. We need to understand at all times we represent the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I told told Tony this uh, and I I often say it to other people. You know, whenever folks say, you know, I just had to tell the truth. That is already a precursor to say I said something I shouldn't have said. And you knew you shouldn't have said it, you, but you're trying to back into justify. I just had to let them see. I had to let them know. No, you didn't. That was your choice. And now, instead of causing a healing in the body, you've caused a rift, a division, a separation. And anytime there's a wound, there's a time to heal. And after the healing, there's a tenderness that occurs. And even after there's a a healing and the tenderness tenderness has subsided, every now and again, you'll look and you'll still see the scar. Let's avoid the scars. Let's avoid the tenderness. Let's because why? Because it can be. You know how they used to say, you know, you go to the doctor, you say, you know, it hurts when I do this. Don't do that then. Let's, let's, let's recap very quickly our, our divine resources. The divine resources is the human resource. It is what is our assignment. Are we really ready to execute our assignment? How much further would we be in the kingdom of God if we would simply execute what our assignment is? Resource, access, 
Our second resource is access. God has placed you into a position. He has, put, he has strategically placed you where you need to be so that he can use you as that divine resource. He's given you access, unprecedented access. And lastly, activate the resource that is in you. Take some action. How many of you have been talking about, I want to do this in the kingdom? How many of us have been talking about, I want to, I want to, I got this grand idea. How many of us have talked about and done nothing? There's too much work to be done in kingdom. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Then how in the world is it that they get all the attention and we don't? We have our own modes of communication. We have our own ways of getting the word of God out. But are we using it? Are we executing? It's time to take action.